I'll admit, I was super, super skeptical of the new Resident Evil before it came out. Because, I mean, it had been, like, how long since we'd have a really good Resident Evil game? Resident Evil 7 is probably my actual new favorite. My original favorite was 1 and 2. Because, I mean, they're the original ones. And the original ones are usually always the best. But also, Silent Hill, Resident Evil, and Fatal Frame were some of my very first horror games. I think a lot of us, it was some of our first ones. Before that, I'd been only playing, you know, all the cute PlayStation games like Spyro. And I'd only had Nintendo systems up until PlayStation and Dreamcast era. So I'd never even dabbled in horror games until the Resident Evil and Silent Hill games started coming out. And I loved them. I loved them. It was like, these are the games I was meant to be playing. Um, and, you know, horror games have really just gone to shit. I'd say probably a little late into the PlayStation 2 life cycle and then on. I think they really went to shit with Dead Space. And I know a lot of people love Dead Space, but Dead Space, I thought, was everything that horror games should not be. And that's just a bunch of jump scares. A good, true scary game is one that doesn't rely on its enemies or its jump scares to scare you. It relies just on the atmosphere, the sound design, um, the overall just environment that you are playing. That is what, that is how you make a really scary game. Limited resources and just some really fucked up stuff going on, that's a really good scary game. And I thought Resident Evil 7 just nailed it. The best parts about it were Resident Evil 7 seemed to finally go back to the survival and the horror aspect of these types of games, and less on the action. A lot of the more recent Resident Evil games were all just action zombie shooters. There was nothing really substantial about them. There was nothing that set them apart or made them really that interesting. And I think Resident Evil 7 finally brings back what makes a real horror game terrifying. Everything about Resident Evil 7 I really loved. Um, the storytelling, I loved the way they told the story in this game, and I'm gonna try to keep away from spoilers. I'll let you know if I'm gonna say any, but um, the way they told this story I thought was really, really good. You ended up playing um, about three different characters, and that was all done through these videotapes you would find and you would play. You'd play through that scene, and that's really how they told stories about what had happened, what is happening, what's going on, is through the videotapes rather than just a bunch of cutscenes. I played Resident Evil 7 from start to finish on my Twitch channel. Not all in one sitting. I, you know, separated it up. But I did play the entire thing um, with everybody on my Twitch channel, and it was awesome. I loved the experience through Resident Evil 7. I never actually felt that things were getting too rinse and repeat, which is something that happens a lot to me. Um, and I never felt like things were getting too old or were dragging on. I constantly felt like they were introducing new and more interesting locations the further I went in the game and I also thought that the puzzles were spaced out really well to where I felt like I was getting the perfect amount of puzzles mixed with exploring mixed with some combat. Combat though was where I felt the game kind of took a nosedive. Um, <laughs> in true Resident Evil fashion the combat was super clunky, super sluggish. Combat was definitely where you felt like the game kind of um, wasn't as good as it could have been. I don't know why the Resident Evil team over at Capcom has struggled with combat for so long. There are so many other games out there that could kind of show them the way of being able to incorporate actually good combat within their game without having to sacrifice any of that survival or horror or fend for yourself feeling. Um, it can definitely be done. Yeah, combat's always been a rough one for Resident Evil. One of the other small things that I really had a hard time with in Resident Evil 7 was the inventory. I know they want to incorporate some type of... Um, inventory management, resource management into their game to add that more of a you can only carry what you can carry kind of feel, but it really kind of just sucks. I don't really know anybody out there who actually loves the way Resident Evil handles their inventory management. Um, I think it is just a outdated way to force resource management on us. There are other ways that they can make us feel that we really need to kind of resource manage without just limiting space. Um, but on top of that, even just the way things were done within our infinite inventory space, boxes that we had in our uh, safe rooms, was a nightmare. Like certain things could stack, certain things couldn't. And I know for a fact, because I tested it, um, a few times I'd find like, you know, one thing of mag ammo and I would put it in my box and I'd open it back up and it was gone. Just, just disappeared. Um, and I would like to have seen them handle just that inventory, not only just what you can carry on your person, but also inventory 
within your actual inventory crate um, handle it a little bit better. It definitely felt dated. It felt like they really didn't try at all to make it seem a little, you know, a little more up to date. But overall, I wouldn't say it really, really caused a problem with my playthrough or put any kind of damper on it. Although, I would have liked to have seen a new game plus. I beat the game. I'm only missing, I think it was like six documents, five bobbleheads, and a few, a few of those ancient coin things, um, antique coins. And I would have loved to have had a New Game Plus option where I just kind of start with the, the uh, upgrades because you do get to spend, you get these, these ancient antique coins, I keep calling them ancient, but these antique coins you spend in these bird cages to unlock these upgrades. Um, anyways, I would really like to have seen um, that incorporated into it so I could keep those upgrades and stuff and not have to just start from scratch. You know, for those of you who do want to start from scratch in a harder difficulty, be my guest, but I would have liked the option for me that just want to do a quick kind of run through and get the, the collection items that I've missed. Um, uh, that would have been nice. I guess I should touch a little bit on the story because I was talking about how much I really liked the story. A lot of times in Resident Evil games, a lot of times in most games, the story just gets so convoluted and just so ridiculous that you just don't even care anymore. And for me to actually say that I, I really, really enjoyed story in a game and that I felt like it it kept up with the pace of the overall experience and the overall, you know, thing that I was doing through the game is very rare for me. I'm very, very picky when it comes to story because I feel like most things have been done. I feel like most companies, not only in games, but books and movies and TV shows, they're just rehashing old ideas. I did feel that a little bit with Resident Evil. I'd say it first. So right from the beginning, you're this dude named Ethan and you're on your way to an abandoned plantation in Louisiana because your wife, Mia, who's been missing for three years, just randomly emails you and is like, hey babe, this is where I'm at. So you go to go find her, which is a very Silent Hill too. You know, your dead wife randomly messages you and she says she's in Silent Hill, so you go to go find her. Same thing in Resident Evil, except she's not dead, she's been missing, and so you go there to find her and you, all hell breaks loose. There's this family, the bakers that are living in this plantation and they're just crazy. Like they've got these weird powers where they can regenerate you know, missing body limbs and all that kind of stuff. So you go, you're exploring um, the plantation, you find your wife in the basement locked up, and, and then you wake up at a dinner table with a whole family around you, a whole crazy ass family eating what definitely, definitely looks like body parts, which is very Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, um, although those are two things I love, Silent Hill 2 is my favorite Silent Hill, I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I was like, oh, come on Resident Evil, you couldn't come up with anything better than that, but they did. Um, as you play through the game, you start finding out, uh, I'm still trying to keep this as spoiler free as possible, um, that this family is, uh, they're infected with this m weird mold shit that, um, ah, I can't keep this unspoilery. So, spoiler story spoilers from now on. If you haven't played it yet and you don't want anything to be spoiled, overall, love the game. It's definitely a buy. They've got a lot of DLC coming out for it. I know they've already announced a few free DLC. Um, it's going to continue some of the story, which is awesome. Definitely get it. It's awesome. Yes. Okay, on with the spoilers. So, you find out this family, they've been infected with this special mold stuff that is from this little girl that you end up running into named Evelyn. And Evelyn turns out, okay, wait, actually, rewind. Your wife has been working for some, you know, unknown corporation, some secret private corporation um, that's been developing this bioweapon which is basically a little girl named Evelyn. And Evelyn has these powers that she can infect people with this special kind of mold. Why has it gotta be mold? I don't know, that's disgusting. Um, that gives her uh, brain control powers over them, but then also gives them these special powers where they can regen their body parts and other weird shit. And they have like, and then some of them have this weird ass mutations and they're just gross, shot with a shotgun into the head, kills them instantly, it's great. Oh, the guns in Resident Evil, oh my god. I The combat's sluggy as hell, but shooting something in the head with any of your guns feels so good. Feels so good. Um, back to the story. So, turns out this little Evelyn chick, she is batshit crazy, and uh, she just wants a family. That is, <laughs> which, okay, that doesn't sound so batshit crazy, but the way she goes about it is. Um, she infects your wife because she wants your wife to be her mom. That's really creepy. She's the one that actually gets Mia to message you to get you here so you can be your dad. And uh, that's the beggars are what she's trying to create as a family. On and on and on. 
So you have to make some decisions because this chick named Zoe randomly calls you up. She's like, yeah, there's bakers, people that you're trying to kill. They're my family. Can you help me get this serum that's going to save me? Because it will block out Evelyn's powers. So you get the serums and you get to choose if you're going to pick, uh, save either Mia or Zoe. I picked Mia because she's my wife. Although she was a crazy ass bitch at the beginning and tried to kill me several times, I forgave her once I found out it actually wasn't her, it was Evelyn controlling her mind. And plus, Zoe, I'm sorry, your family's crazy, but they're your family, so you gotta deal with your family shit. Um, and so anyways, I then end up having to get some special shit to give to Evelyn to make her die. Turns out she was the old lady in the wheelchair. Oh, and then you find out throughout the course of near the end and you read some papers or I don't remember how you find out but that Lucas has been working with the same corporation is keeping an eye on what's going on and reporting back. He must have done a terrible job reporting back because all hell is broken loose. Shit has hit the fan and well they're still just going on just pretty much normally. Anyways you find out that he had been giving some like vaccine or something that keeps him from being able to be infected by a Evelyn which doesn't make any sense to me because during the dinner scene, he gets his hand cut off and he's just like, aha, this is an everyday occurrence. If you've been vaccinated against the benefits, I guess you could say benefits of this mind control mold, then I don't think I'd be laughing too much about getting my hand cut off. I'd be like, what the fuck? This isn't gonna grow back because I'm not infected like you guys. Maybe it was just against the mind control part, but then what's the point? But then after you save, kill, whatever, Evelyn, Helicopter comes down that's branded with the Umbrella Corporation logo. Of course, this dude helps you and he's like, by the way, my name's Redfield. But they announced that it wasn't actually Chris Redfield. So why even, why even do that? I don't, I don't know. It's Capcom. Who the fuck knows what they're doing? But, so that's the story. <laughs> In a nutshell. What I was trying to explain was that it's very hard for me to actually enjoy a story and not feel like it's just a rehash story of somebody else's. And um, I didn't. Once I actually got into what was going on and just kind of started piecing together everything that I'd seen and I experienced um, throughout as the story unravels, I find out that it actually wasn't something that I've seen a million times before. Um, and I thought it was told really, really well. It was really interesting and I loved it and I loved all the characters. So, in short, this game's amazing. It's awesome. You should totally buy it. I can't think of anything else to say. Um, I really, the only two things I didn't like was the combat controls sucked and the inventory management, but overall the game is a great game. I'm looking forward to all the DLC. I'm definitely going to play. I'll, I'll stream that as well on my Twitch. And, um, what did you guys think? Did you like it as much as I did? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as always, thanks for watching.